In this video lecture, we are going to understand distribution of microorganisms. We know that microorganisms are ubiquitous in nature, so we can isolate from anywhere or any sources. So let's start with the first point, that is distribution of microorganisms. Now we know that microorganisms are present everywhere on the world. They are present in the soil, in the air, in the water, in the food, milk, and they are also present on the human body. Now let's start one by one. Now first, the distribution of microorganisms in soil. The number and the kind of microorganisms present in soil, which is totally depends on the type of soil, quantity of plants, animals, humus, acidity or alkalinity, depth of the soil, degree of aeration, moisture contents and the temperature. The types of microorganisms or the number of microorganisms present in the soil is totally depends on the six important things and mostly the microorganisms present in the soil they are totally depends on the the six important things because without these things without the six point the microorganisms can't survive in the soil and when they are present in the soil they will provide all important things to the soil for example they will provide the nutrients to the soil they will provide temperature to the soil they will provide pH to the soil etc and because of that soil fertility will occur and this fertile soil will improve the plant health. Now next important point is the distribution of microorganisms in air. Now we know that air is a very good vehicle for the distribution of diseases or the transmission of diseases. That's what we can easily convey that microorganisms are also present in the air. So the microorganisms are found in air being carried there by wind current. Microorganisms do not grow and multiply in air because conditions are not favorable for the growth. Because see, microorganisms do not grow in the air because in the air there is no moisture at all. That's what and the most important thing for the growth of microorganisms is the moisture. The number of microbial kinds depends on, as I said you, moisture, location, dust particles, presence of toxic gases. So this is the distribution of microorganisms in the air. Now we can see this picture. Now here we can easily observe the different types or cycle. So through this cycle, microorganisms can flow from one object to another object and they can spread everywhere. In general, marine air contains fewer microorganisms than dusty and des desert air. The air over high, high mountains is usually free from organisms. Dusty rooms usually show more organisms than room kept free from dust. Bacteria in air usually adhering to particles of dust. Now we know that air is totally made from the um, uh, microorganisms. And if we have a dusty room, then we can easily observe the microorganisms in the room via the dust or something else. And if we, if we are in the clean room, so we can't observe the microorganisms via dust and all that stuff. Next point, there is distribution of microorganisms in water. We know that most water contain large number of bacteria and this number depends on the source of water. Water polluted with sewage contains thousands of microorganisms. Practically, all bacterial species found in soil may add be present in water. Now, the water is the most important thing for the growth of microorganisms because we, I, as I told you, most important and most important factor which is required for the growth of microorganism is the moisture. And in water, they will get easily how much moisture they want from the water. That's what the most important and more and more number of microorganisms we can isolate from the water now we can see this figure now here uh, this is the column where the column starts from the air that is air then water then red brown sand red violet green gray and this is the stopper now here we can easily observe the how much microorganisms or which microorganisms can grow in these locations or in these Zone. So at this top zone, aerobic microorganisms can grow because air is there. Now beneath this microaerophilic, then beneath this anaerobic, and there there is a H2. Yes, and this is the microbial zone where the different microbial zones are there. Now in aerobic zone, algae, cyanobacteria, aerobic heterotrophs will grow. Beneath this H2S oxidizer, faculty anaerobes will grow. Then purple non-sulfur. Photoheterotrophs will grow below this that's 
under the anaerobic condition purple sulfur bacteria green sulfur bacteria will grow and here at the h2s sulfur reduce reducers fermented heterotrophs will grow and these are the major reactions will happen during this whole zone so this is nothing but the distribution of microorganisms in water next point distribution of microorganisms in milk now see we we uh, sometimes we heard the news about the like uh, if the person got contaminated or person got the infected by the milk because we know that microorganisms are present inside the milk and if they are taking such contaminated milk then easily that microorganism the, or that pathogen which is present in the milk that will go inside the human body and that human body will make itself infected so here normal udders of cows are probably never free from bacteria which means fresh drawn milk is not sterile the first milk drawn contains more organisms than milk collected in a close operation because most of bacteria are washed away from the udder early in the process the important disease of cattle may be transmitted to human through raw milk is the bovine tuberculosis sometimes of uh, the udder of the cow is infected by organisms of human origin by milker as typhoid fever and dysentery so see the distribution of microorganisms in milk is is like a is ancient question that till now there is not that much research done because the all our research is going on uh, nanoparticles and immunology and all that stuff but this area is lagging behind because of the knowledge and because of some myths so we have to focus this area in the view of research now we can see this figure now in this figure we can easily observe the microorganisms and different uh, food products like milk food products with the help of milk now distribution of microorganisms in human body now we know that we are doing daily daily chores uh, in in outside to the home inside the home so that's what we are de dealing with the air we are dealing with the soil we are dealing with the water so what are microorganisms present in these sources that will come in our body or on our body so because of that the our body will will become contaminated or will become infected so we know that in the early morning we are daily we are having bath why we are having bath simply to remove the microorganisms from our body part that's what we have to do bath so the normal flora of microbial um, of the microorganisms or human body is like is ancient question and the normal flora means what the microorganisms present on the human skin and the mucous membrane it is of two type that is residential flora and transient flora the residence of flora means what the flora is a constant flora or it's a constant population and it we we can't remove this population re completely from our body while transient flora means this flora uh, which comes in our body while doing the daily chores like air soil and all that stuff we can remove this transient flora completely from our body by using the different disinfect agents sometimes these microorganisms those are present in our body that acts as a symbiont with our body this known as parasitism but sometimes due to some environmental changes in our body or sometimes ph or temperature if changes then these microorganisms will become as a infectious agent or pathogens due to that we will be get infected or will get diseased so we have to maintain that relationship between the microorganisms and our body so this is all about the distribution of microorganisms in human body thanks a lot